Right, oh, oh. Hello folks. Now, you may have noticed we don't have a whole lot of space in here. In fact, it gets incredibly cramped when trying to film some of the more ambitious projects like the case mods because they take up the whole bench and I've got to work from the front, probably film from the outside, looking in, and that's actually quite difficult, especially with the CNC machine taking up so much space, the benches being filled up with things like the lathe and the pillar drill, and of course all this left side filled with these various tools that I need to be able to have access to constantly. So moving this table around means that there's not a whole lot of room to play with, and we constantly have to worry about things like lighting. So lighting is crucial to be able to get a clear video, and for the most part, these strip lights that I've got here do pretty well. The problem is that if you're trying to do any kind of high frame rate work, say 120 FPS, then it's no good because they just flicker. So to get around that, we use things like these, which are LED lights, and they don't flicker. But these also don't fit onto the walls at the moment. And whilst I think they're really good value and they're fantastic in how they operate, there is a gleaming problem in that you need lots of tripods like these. Now, if you have a lot of space, this isn't a problem. But as you can see, this takes up quite a lot of room. In fact, it takes up almost the entire workbench just with one of them. Now we've got two for different directional lighting and trying to fit them anywhere is nigh on impossible at times. And of course, it's a bit of a shame to be using these constantly because you actually get battery options for these newer lights. And even if I use the batteries, I'm not gonna have a wire, but I'm still gonna have the tripod, which I'm gonna be tripping over and not being able to work around. So I thought there has to be a better way. Now to me, it made perfect sense to try out the new 3D printer to make some functional brackets that allow me to take these lights and basically stick them wherever I want. Now one of the cool things about the workshop is because it's very small, I actually have access to the ceiling and the walls very easily. So in theory, if I had something, say, lying off one of these rafters, I could just stick a light up here or here. And being able to produce my own parts means that if I need as many as I want, say I need like 10 brackets or something, I can just print off 10 in one go and stick them around the workshop. In theory, it should mean that I can take these lights and put them wherever I want. So what I've gone and done is I've modeled up a few different prototypes and I started printing them out on the machine. Now, the thing about 3D printing is it's not quite as exciting to video compared with a CNC machine because it's just that much slower. So we could, obviously go with a nice montage like this. Alternatively, I could just go through and explain what I've gone and done. Now, the way these lights actually attach onto the tripods is very simple. They have like a male connector on the tripod top itself, and then you simply slot it on using this socket and then tighten it down with a set screw. The thing is, if I'm going to be making like a 3D printed version, that's gonna be made out of plastic, whereas the tripod ones are metal. So this is probably just gonna damage it over time, and I don't really, really like the idea. Plus. Screwing this constantly in and out, is it actually takes a bit of time and I don't really like it. I'd rather have a simpler mechanism where I can just take it and then slot it in. And then when I need to move a light, I just unclip it like that and then just slot it in somewhere else. That makes a lot more sense. So what I went and did is modeled up these two parts in Fusion 360. The first being a male part, which goes into the lighting fixture itself. And the second one being a female part and I can then screw into the sides of the workshop using these handy M4 countersunk holes. So how does it actually work? Well, basically this side has a sort of lip on the inside and these gaps here allow a little bit of flex. The concept is that you take one of these and then clip it in like 
So, now that's got quite a strong bond, but I made some errors. Now, this is obviously the first version, and the first thing I did is I put a great big gap at the bottom here, and that doesn't do a good job. As you can see, it moves up and down, and I don't really want this to be wiggling around in place. It's nice that it can slide around, and it does actually hold the weight like so, but these supports here are not really strong enough. I think I needed to bring these out further. And there's also a slight issue in that this is PLA. And whilst the PLA works very well for printing, um, for these sorts of applications, PLA is probably not an ideal material because over time, because this is gonna be flexed a bit and put under strain, there's a good chance that the PLA is just going to crack. So I think it's a better choice instead to use a material like PTG or ABS. Now I don't have any PTG at the moment, but I did buy some ABS filament with the machine. So that's what I'm gonna use. So moving on from version one, we have version two, which looks like, well, like this. Uh, as you can see, that was not a very successful print. What happened is that the uh, print didn't adhere to the surface of the printing bed properly. And because of that, it basically got caught on it and strung. And naturally it happened the moment that I left the room. I had it going for about half an hour okay. I left, went to do some more modeling, came back and it was a shoelace. And unfortunately that got on my printing head as well. So I had to clean that off. And this is a good memento as to why I should always be more careful with my setting. So we scrapped that one and went to version three, which honestly isn't a whole lot better. I mean, it's not a shoelace, but it is incredibly warped. If you can see, so I actually stopped this print early because it was clearly not going to go anywhere. Now, I think this is actually relating to my print bed itself. There might be either a cold spot or there was something that just didn't quite allow it to adhere properly. And it could also have been the settings. So I made it an intermediary one that had 15% uh, infill, sort of the standard level that comes from the speed printing. And unfortunately, it just snapped the moment that I sort of picked up and flexed it a little bit. So instead, I went a bit overkill and used 100% infill for this little piece. And I'm assuming that perhaps that's just a little bit too much for the ABS. And without having a proper enclosure, it warped massively, didn't stick properly, and the print naturally failed. So, not to be outdone, I tried again with some slightly different settings and came up with this one. Now, compared with the PLA print, as you can see, this is much beefier. It's the same overall thickness and dimensions, but this one has a slightly shorter top to it, which will mean that it won't wiggle up and down. And it also has much larger, beefier supports because primarily these are either going to be held upside down like so, or they're going to be on their side. So if it's on the side, it means obviously these top and bottom surfaces are going to be quite load bearing and I want them to be nice and strong. They're not going to be flexing everywhere. There is a slight issue though, and it's like this. So whilst I can use this PLA surface for the uh, mail connector fine, if I put it in, <clears throat> as you can imagine, that doesn't sound so good. Now, the reason for that is that the clip on the inside of this part, I think is just a little bit too big. So it has to expand quite a lot to be able to accommodate the mail connector. Now there's an also inherent problem with this design in that it's round around the outside here. And that means I'm asking it to flex against its Gaussian curvature, which is just going to cause problems. So if you've ever tried picking up a slice of pizza, you know, if you curve it, it won't bend down very easily. It's the same concept here, except I'm asking it to bend and it's not gonna do a very good job. And if anything, the added stiffness might cause it just to break. Because if you take a look at how hard it is to remove, so it does come off, but it's not quite as sleek as I was anticipating. So that meant going back to the drawing board and coming up with this chunky boy, which is even bigger, but a lot more effective. So there are a few key revisions with this one. Namely, I've reduced the size of the uh, clip overhang. I've also made these ribs along the outside much larger. I've taken them all the way to the edges, which means that it should, in theory, be a lot stronger. It certainly feels it. And then the biggest thing, actually, is these clips are no longer round, both on the inside nor on the outside. So what I've done is I made them flat on this side here, so they're going to be easier to flex out. But also on the inside, what I did is I made it round at the top where it mates with this surface, which is of course round. And then I also made it square underneath that. So I used the sweep tool to convert a sort of an overhanging lip into a nice gradient so that it would print smoothly. But that means that these prongs here are significantly more flexible 
than these ones over here, despite being thicker. So they should be very strong, but at the same time, a little bit more flexible. And the result is a much more pleasing fit like this. And as you can see, that's more than strong enough to hold a light, even if I wiggle it like so. To me, solving little problems like this is one of the incredible things that a 3D printer can do, because products like this, yeah, there might be one which exists on the market, but I may not be able to find it. It may not necessarily work for my use case, but simply being able to go and model something up and have a working prototype within just a couple hours of having the idea, I think is absolutely fantastic. And the fact that I can then do an iterative design process to come up with something that works significantly better, I think is really interesting. Now I'm gonna be making this file free to download so you can try printing it out yourself. You can find the GravCAD link down in the description. Now obviously I've tailored this to my specific needs in the workspace, but there's no reason you couldn't just take the file and then adjust it to fit what you need to have done. I'd love to see what kind of improvements and changes that you guys might be able to make to this design and see where it goes. Now, of course, it goes without saying, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to be able to keep up with all of our latest modding, 3D printing, CNC machining, hardware reviews, everything, because it's some really great content around the corner and I wouldn't want you to miss any of it. You can also keep up with us over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and builds.gg. I'll catch you next time, folks. Thank you.